Hi Julia, happy World Mental Health Day. I am super excited to sit down with you today and ask you a couple of questions around mental health. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Happy World Mental Health Day to you as well. As you know, on October 10th, 2022, we are celebrating World Mental Health Day. And this year's theme is to make mental health and well-being a global priority. So I thought this would be an excellent time to sit down together and chat about mental health and make sure that we are making this information globally accessible. So what do you think? Should we get started? Absolutely, I think this is an excellent idea and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, let's dive right in. Okay, the first question is super simple and it is, what means mental health to you? Yeah, great question. So what does mental health mean to me? What does it mean? What is, what is mental health, right? And we can answer this question in so many different ways, right? But I think what is one thing that has really stuck with me is, is that 10 years ago, I had no idea what mental health was. So I'm so happy that nowadays we're talking more about the importance of mental health, of really, you know, feeling good, being positive. And of course, we don't have a good positive day every single day. It's not really about that, right? Yeah. I think we all have negative experiences. We all have negative feelings. We're all working through our own stuff. However, I think over the long scheme of things, over the, the broader spectrum, when you're looking at how you're doing on a you know, overall basis, I think it's important that obviously overall you're tending more towards the positive side. And obviously, again, you know, sometimes we have very difficult experiences in our lives that bring us a little bit down and that make us feel more negative. And I think this is always an important time to reflect and to understand why is this making us so sad or why is this triggering so many thoughts in us? Do we need to change something in our lives? Do we need to make a different decision? Do we need to have a conversation? But I think thoughts and feelings are always giving us a really good insight into what we feel and who we are and maybe what kind of action step we need to take next. And mental health is extremely important because if you are not mentally healthy, I think it will have a considerable effect on your physical health as well as well because if um, you know if you don't have the mental strength and discipline to decide to go for example out and go to the gym or exercise and go for a walk in nature then you're not going to do that so your mental health will also have an impact on your physical health and so mental health is, is so so important um, it's so important to be aware of it it's so important to understand what it really means and yeah i'm super excited to talk with you more today about mental health okay great next question what are some mental health practices Okay, I think this is an excellent question. And I think this is really important to say because oftentimes we think that to complex problems, we need to find complex solutions. But the answer is way simpler. I want you to simply ask yourself, what do you like to do in order to recharge? What do you like to do in order to take care of yourself? What fills your heart with joy? What makes you really happy? And I want to give you a couple of different examples, of course, as well, because maybe you still think, I don't really know, I don't really know what to do, right? And sometimes we may be so wrapped up in our day-to-day -day life that we have forgotten what we really enjoy doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it is really important as well that when you are starting to integrate some of these practices into your day-to-day -to, -day, to ask yourself, how am I actually feeling with this? Am I feeling better? Am I feeling lighter? Am I feeling happier? Am I feeling more joyful? Am I feeling more relaxed? And the reason why that is, is, is because you're creating awareness. And as soon as you start to have a positive experience, you are more likely to actually do this more regularly. So to integrate it more often into your day to day, because you've had the experience that it's actually working. So here are a couple of my favorite examples. I love to do breathing, meditation and yoga. Those are some things that are incredibly great for my mental health. I love to exercise. I love to go outside in nature. I love to read a book. 
one of the things that I really love to do as well, especially for my mental health, is to write and journal and to plan because that is really a big part of staying sane for myself and to make sure that I have kind of everything under control, what I need to control in a day-to-day when it comes to my business. Okay, so those are just a few different examples, but I think if you ask yourself these different questions, you will find an answer. And here's one more pro tip. If the things that I just told you as examples for mental health practices would be so simple and easy to do, then everyone I think would do it. So maybe it is a complex solution to the problem. Love this answer and I do so many of these things in my day to day as well. The next question is, why do you think has mental health become so important in recent years? Yeah, such an important and great question. And there's, again, so many different things that I could say about this, right? First of all, of course, we've had the pandemic. People started to stay at home, working from home. They were socially distant. They were socially isolated. And so they were looking at the internet and they were looking at social media in order to entertain themselves. So lots of screen time, less contact with the outside world, with other people. And I think that does have a strong impact on our mental health, right? Because we are all social human beings and we are seeking connection. Even though you might be an introvert, you might still want to be with people, with the people that you love. And that was not always possible, especially in the last two years. So that is one of the reasons I think why mental health has become more and more important. Another reason is just social media itself and um, for two different reasons actually. First of all, I think social media has actually helped to increase the awareness of mental health diseases and how important it is nowadays to really take care of that. And second of all, I actually think that social media is one of the reasons why people are experiencing mental health issues today because we have this like external world accessible with a click and we can start to compare ourselves and that is not very healthy right we're starting to see things where we compare ourselves and where we think i would like to have this life as well and it can obviously have an, a positive impact on us but it can also have a negative impact on us when we're constantly comparing ourselves when we're constantly thinking i'm not good enough i don't have all of these different things right um or they have this amazing relationship, but I don't have this re amazing relationship. We're starting to ask ourselves a lot of questions. We have a lot of external influence that is super accessible to us and it can be good for us and it could be not so good for us. So I think it's always really important to ask yourself the question as well, are the things that I'm currently doing in my life supporting my mental health or are they not supporting my mental health? So if you're, for example, scrolling through social media and you recognize, and that is where that importance of awareness comes in, where you recognize I'm constantly comparing myself to this person or I am constantly getting triggered by this person, then you have two options. Either you obviously turn off your social media um, and maybe you delete even the app um, for some time or you create some boundary around how much time Time you want to spend on that app or you want to maybe just unfollow that person or mute the person because it's just not good for you right we all have these people in our lives and it's totally okay and i think i'm a super big um you know like proposer of yes absolutely turn off the people that are not good for you even though they might be friends and you can you know maybe mute them so they don't see that you unfollow them but you know just make sure that you're taking care of yourself and Sometimes we, you know, we need to work through a couple of different things ourselves, through some internal tensions and beliefs and and that's okay as well. And it sometimes doesn't always have something to do with the other person and more with ourselves. Um, and so we just need to trust that process. But it took me a little bit of the question, why has mental health become so important in recent years? And I really believe that it is that combination of screen time, you know, being constantly connected. It's not good for us. There's a lot of research on this. And then we also have obviously that factor of comparison and then also that factor of social isolation. So sometimes people might spend a lot more time on 
social media than to actually see people in person and connect with people in person, right? So our priorities might have shifted and we are not really aware of what it does to us. So it is really, really important to start asking yourself these questions like, for example, how am I feeling in this situation? What feels good to me? What doesn't feel so good to me? And yeah, I think when, when you start to create awareness around these different things, you can probably pretty quickly pinpoint what is good for you and what is not so good for you. Okay, the next question is a little bit more personal. And the question is, what is your own experience with mental health? I knew that you're gonna ask me this question. Yes, I'm absolutely, of course, happy to share a little bit about my own personal story with mental health. I was actually diagnosed with anxiety and depression in August of 2018. Wow, really? I didn't know. Okay. And up until that point, I had absolutely no idea what was going on with me. The only thing that really took me to going to see a professional was that I didn't feel like myself anymore. I had a lot of negative thoughts. I felt extremely negative. I had a lot of negative emotions. I felt extremely anxious, even though at the time I didn't even know that what I was feeling was anxiety. And so I just got to a point where I was like, I really don't feel like myself anymore. I'm constantly getting in fights with my partner. I'm taking things way too personally. I can't sleep at night. My digestion is off. Um, I have negative thoughts, right? All of these different things made me at some point realize, hey, there's something I need to do. So I went to see a professional and I had to fill out this questionnaire around anxiety and depression. And I was absolutely shocked how often I said that I experienced these different things every single day. Because I think, you know, especially with anxiety, depression and burnout, it is not something that is happening from one day to another, but it's actually happening over a, sh a long period of time. And so, yeah, so that was kind of an interesting experience um, because all of the things that I said that were happening to me were almost kind of my new normal. I just thought that that's just how I was, right? That's just how I behaved for a while. Mm -hmm. And so filling out this questionnaire was such an eye-opening experience for me. And so, yeah, so I had a chat off obviously with the professional, with the, with the doctor afterwards. Um, and she said to me, wow, you're really not doing so well at the moment, huh? And she's like, you're having high anxiety, you're feeling pretty depressed. And, you know, we talked about everything that was going on in my life. And obviously I think there's always, it's always a complex situation, right? It's not just one thing. I think it's one thing spilling into the next thing. For me, it was work spilling into my personal life and not really being happy where I was. I was commuting a lot. Um, and at the beginning, I loved it, but over time it became extremely stressful and I just didn't feel connected to myself anymore. And so, yeah, so I actually decided to take three months off in order to take care of myself and to better learn what had actually happened to me? How did I get to that point? And so I learned a ton about mental health. I learned a ton about stress management, the importance of taking care of yourself on a regular basis. Just like we know nowadays as well that we should always, you know, move our bodies. We are absolutely aware of this nowadays, right? We know that physical exercise is extremely important for our well-being, but we didn't really know that mental health is also extremely important for our well-being. And there's one phrase that really resonates with me, which is something along the lines of, not everyone is mentally sick, right? But every one of us has mental health. And if we are not starting to take care of our mental health, we can become mentally sick. So we really need to take care of that. And I think that mental health is actually even more important than physical health. Because if you're not mentally strong, if you're not mentally, you know, in a positive place, it is a lot harder to make the decision to, for example, go and work out, right? To have that mental strength, to have that mental discipline. I think that even comes before physical health. So you need to be mentally healthy in order to be mentally disciplined and strong and, and tough and make these decisions to, to invest in your routines and invest in your different habits, right? So yeah, mental health, super, super important. And if you have never thought about mental health before, I would highly encourage you to start thinking about it more. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. 
I love it. Thank you so much. So we did talk a little bit about journaling in those self-care practices and I was curious if you could share a couple of different mental health journaling prompts with us today. Yes, I would absolutely love to share a couple of journaling prompts. I already mentioned to you that I love journaling and that I love to do that as a mental health practice in order to let go of the things that are maybe sticking and sitting up here and I can't let go of them. So um, all of the journaling prompts that I'm sharing are actually part of the Peak Performance Planner, my personal um, daily, weekly and monthly planner that I created just for you in order to take care of your mental health, avoid burnout and also make sure that you're more productive. Yes, I combined everything in one because I think all of these different things are connected with each other. And here are the three different journaling prompts that I'd like you to ask yourself every single day. Number one, what are you grateful for? Number two, what did you do to take care of yourself today? Because I do believe that you should do something every single day in order to fill your own energy cups, in order to take care of yourself and practice self-care, practice mental health, in order to, yeah, just be your best self. And then the last journaling prompt that I have for you today is what were the most prevailing thoughts on your mind today? And this is another super important and super powerful question because that helps you again to create awareness around what did you actually think of a lot today? Were you ruminating? Were you overthinking a situation that's maybe not so important? So that really helps to think, hey, what have I actually thought about all day? What is maybe keeping me from sleeping at night? All of these different things are super, super important in order to start taking care of your mental health. Okay, great. And the final question that I have for you today, Julia, is what do you actually help people with? What is your company about? Tell us a little bit more about how you are bridging the intersection between mental health, stress management and productivity and what all of these different things have to do with each other. Thank you so much for asking this question. Yes. So what do I do in my business around mental health? So I really combined all of the different things that I learned over the different years, right? So from mental health to stress management, but one of the biggest realizations that I had when I started working with clients individually and in group settings was that people were really struggling with time management and boundaries and that had a huge impact on their mental health and on their stress levels. So I combined everything together into a method that I call the peak performance method and it is a nine dimensional model that combines mindfulness, productivity and leadership tools. And what it basically does is it combines all of these different important things in order to help you build new routines, build new habits and first and foremost of course build awareness around what you are doing in order to help you create space, create space to build something new, to rethink your habits, to rethink your routines and build something that is actually really helping you to be empowered and sustain your performance over time. And I do this in a lot of different ways and we can get into that another time, but I do workshops and trainings and group coaching and individual coaching, all of these different things. But really, really, really the reason why I'm doing all of these different things is, is because mental health is so important to me and I know that a lot of people are suffering and I really want to help them understand that it is not impossible. It is not impossible to create a routine. It is not impossible to find five or 10 minutes in a day to take care of yourself. It is not impossible to manage your time, to take control over your own time and your calendar. All of these different things. So yeah, as you can see, I am super passionate about these different subjects and topics. And yeah, if you want to learn more, I would say just go over to my YouTube channel and there are all the different things about me and about mental health, stress management, productivity, and so on. Wow, really? Wow, that's so interesting. Okay, very cool. Well, Julia, thank you so very much for sharing all of these details with us today. This was absolutely insightful and helpful, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. <laughs>